Hey, you guys want some details on all the new and upcoming 3D printers releasing later this year? Because uh, I know some things. I just got back from this really cool event called Rapid TCT. Basically, it's a giant additive manufacturing 3D printing event where all the leading industry heads get together and just basically flex on each other. And I'm not just talking about like Creality and Prusa, I'm talking about like EOS and Stratasys and companies that are making giant metal 3D printers that are sending stuff to space. It's insane. So how about we talk about some of the cool stuff I saw and hopefully I can actually spoil some stuff for you and get you excited about what's coming out. Let's get started. So I was invited out to the event by Elegoo, and at the time, I didn't know that this was their first time appearing in the US at an event like this. Now this video isn't sponsored by Elegoo, they just brought me out to the convention, which allowed me to get all this cool footage and like, actually, you know, go. But I didn't want to do the typical YouTuber thing and like talk and film while I was there. It just felt, it just gives me the ick. So I got a lot of B-roll of some of the machines I saw and some of the companies that were there, and I'm just going to do voiceover and talk about what I saw, the good, the bad, and there's some really cool, exciting stuff I saw that I didn't even know existed and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. So let's just get right into it. And I think one of the 3D printing companies people were most anxious to know about was Bamboo. And unfortunately, they didn't have anything new except a couple new composites and stuff for the uh, X1E, uh, really cool carbon fiber stuff, but nothing like in terms of like a bigger machine. However, and I'll just start the video off by this, maybe somebody there and you know, I'm not under any obligation to confirm or deny any of this, said that we should definitely be uh, ready for a larger than 300 cube machine coming out, coming out sometime in Q3, oops. Next up is Prusa, and they did have some new machines there, and I'll talk about that in a second, but I was actually able to get a good look at the Prusa XL, the five head changer that I definitely have um, on the way from Prusa, and I am, I'm really excited to print some stuff with this. Like this machine was gorgeous to look at. It can do multi-material all in the same print with no waste, minimal waste, no waste, I think no waste. But it was really cool to just see it in action printing the entire time. I got a better look at uh, some of the enclosures for the Mark IV and the XL, but they also have this new machine the Pro HT90. This is a $10,000 Delta printer by Prusa and it's made for like engineering grade stuff, but like probably, probably not for you guys, probably not for my audience. Yeah. It was pricey, but really cool. Now there were some other companies there, like uh, Anycubic, I got to see their multicolor printer, which kind of just looks like an AMS. It looks like a pretty decent machine and maybe I'm getting sent one. I got to send some emails back and forth, but it's a pretty standard Bensley or nothing really to like write home about or freak out about. Mingdu was there too and I haven't, I don't know who, I haven't looked in on them in a while. Um, I didn't know they make giant 3D printers and I definitely wanna research this more, but I had no idea they had machines this massive. Another company that was there that I really wish I had gotten more interaction with was Mosaic. They make the Palette 2, the Palette 3. It's one of the original color changing systems for 3D printers and they have some really cool machines. I just didn't quite have time to interact with them. They're on the pricier side, but like it seems like really good quality and I, I want to look more into this. They had the uh, mosaic array, which is like four 3D printers and one for like mass production. It, it was a sweet system. Uh, definitely, definitely more research is required. Okay. On day one, while I was just walking around filming, I saw FL Sun's booth. And then on Wednesday, when I went back to film, I could not find it. I literally walked around for almost an hour asking people, where is FL Sun's booth? We even searched it on the app and they didn't pop up. It was like, it was like a fever dream. I was just wandering around like, oh, I know I saw their booth. I know it's here. Maybe I imagined it. Maybe it was a fever dream. Maybe I got too drunk last night. No, I have video footage. It was there. Couldn't find it. However, it's not the end of the world because the new machine they were boasting there was the FL Sun S1, which I literally have on the other side of this wall. I'm testing it. It's really loud. FL Sun, please do something about that. Now, moving into like actual new stuff that I've never seen or is yet to be released. Um, I never knew this company existed. Piocrete, Piocrete, I don't really know how to say it. Apparently they're owned by Creality and they had a really unique machine there. It looks like a CRM4 because the CRM4 is based off of this, or at least that's what the reps there told me, that this company uh, Piocrete had made this pellet fed 3D printer system. And if you guys aren't familiar with pellet feeding 3D printers, I'm not that familiar with them either, but you basically pour pellets into it and melt it down could be really, really good for recycling 3D prints. And I want to explore this more because that's always the stopgap for re-spooling used when failed uh, filament and prints and supports. How do I crush it down into pellets to use it on a machine like this? Anyway, this is a really cool machine and uh, I want one. I just don't know where I put it. Now, the part you guys have been waiting for, the reason you came to this video, who had new stuff there? 
Well, since we're talking about a company owned by Creality, let's just talk about Creality and the Creality K2 Plus. Now, I wasn't able to get a lot of footage of this because every time I went by this thing, there was like 15 people just standing by it, staring at it like this, like it was a painting, like, oh, hmm, interesting. Like, move, let me get, let, let other people look at it. Like, Jesus, it's, it, it's just a printer. But it looked really cool. It looks like a fairly good build quality. Apparently the one that they had at the event was like the first working model. So it's, it's, it's seen some miles. That's not bad. It did have some stuff printing. Um, I'll be the first one to state. I'm not the first one to say this, but I'm just gonna, first time I'm going to say it. It looks like they just copied the AMS. There's literally an AMS hub on the back where it, it, you, it's, it can support up to four. They're not an AMS. It's, it's CFS. It's whatever it is. It's here, but it's, it's an AMS. It's a multicolor system. And, or multi-filament system, and it's it just it just plugs into the back. Um, it, if if they did just copy bamboo and it is literally an AMS gutted and rebranded, I'm hopeful for it. It should work. That's not bad. And then the K2 Plus itself, it's just a bigger K1 Max. Uh, the firmware looks exactly the same. The print head is a little different. We were able to actually take it off and look at it. It looks like maintenance is going to be fairly easy on it. Actually, easier than the K1 Max. Like the plugs were right there in the front. It looks like it's going to be. I'm, I'm very hopeful for this machine. I should be getting mine mid-July to really start testing it before it goes out for like the actual uh, delivery for the pre-orders. Um, big build volume, 350 by 350, that's that's awesome. It's even, it's, I'm gonna be able to print so much big stuff on this. So it looked like a solid build. I'm excited to get it and really start putting it to the test. Aside from that, Creality didn't really have anything crazy. They had some laser engraver stuff and I think there was something with their Sir Moon that should just have died a long time ago. Uh, but yeah, cool machine. Moving on. Now everybody knew the K2 Plus was going to be there. What people didn't know it was going to be there was Elegoo's new machine. And no, I'm not talking about the Orange Storm Giga, even though it was there and printing pretty well the entire time. I'm talking about this new Core XY that is literally a bamboo clone. This printer is the Centauri 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 Alpha Centauri Centauri Carbon. Yep, and you're probably saying it with me. Carbon? Really? And you know what? I'm kind of here for the pettiness. This is a company's first direct stab at bamboo. And I know, oh, what about the K1 Max and the K1? No, the K1 is smaller than bamboo's entire line, therefore it's a little cheaper. You have your K1, you have your bamboo size, you have your K1 Max, the bamboo's right there in the middle. This is literally a 256 by 256 printer. It's a bamboo. With Creality firmware, once you look at that touchscreen and you compare it to the firmware on the K1s and K1 Maxes and the V3 Enders, uh, it's the same. It, it's the same layout, but this it's green on theirs, and um, Creality's is blue. Which again, I'm not mad about because I actually like the firmware layout and the user interface on the K1 series. It's easy to navigate and follow, and I like it better than what's been on the Neptune three and four pluses or whatever has been on whatever whatever they've been running Clipper on. I don't really like it. It's 256 by 256. It has a flexible PEI sheet. It has a camera. It has a full die cast frame, and it has a poop shoot. Now the poop shoot could just be for the filament changes and purges when you're swapping a roll around or and this can't be confirmed or denied because nobody there would give me a straight answer on if they're going to do multicolor they kind of said no but then somebody else was like oh i'm not sure i think they're going to be doing multicolor they'd be stupid not to do multicolor and it has a poop shoot now this is just me speculating but after talking to a bunch of the elegoo reps and going to the elegoo fan meet and greet and the way elegoo was being ambiguous about the pricing and everybody was kind of guessing and they were joking and if you read people and you pay close attention pretty 99.9 .9 sure this is going to be under 500 and i might even be as bold to say 399 but we will see when the price gets released i believe they said sometime around august but if elegu pulls off this x1 carbon i mean the centauri carbon properly this is actually going to upset the market i am very hopeful for this now this is bamboo's for not bamboo elegu this is elegu's first stab at a true core xy that's uh, that's a bold move, Cotton, and I am very excited to see how it pans out. Okay, so that's gonna do it for 3D printers. There were a lot of other companies there. I was only there for two days. I had obligations at uh, Elegoo's booth, so I wasn't able to interact and see everything. I'm sure people like Joel, um, 3D Printing Nerd, Uncle Jesse, Sam Prentice, uh, Pooch, I'm sure all of them are gonna put out some form of video on what they saw, and you can just Google Rapid TCT, look at some of the companies. Um, none of this is like secret information. It just depends on who else was there vlogging and filming. But the last thing I wanna show you is a 3D scanner and I didn't know this I didn't know this existed. Apparently it's been out for a little while, but this is the Revo Point Miraco. Miraco, Miraco, Miraco. 
I'm pretty sure they were pronouncing it Mirko, but I'm pretty sure that's Morocco. Anyway, you guys have seen me using uh, the Revo Point Pop and the uh, 3D Maker Pro Mole Scanner and the Creality Ferret that definitely didn't exist and then it got to exist. It, it's a weird thing. Anyway, you usually have to hook 3D scanners up to something for processing power. You have to hook it, up, hook it up to your computer. You have to run it off your phone or a tablet and then hook up a separate battery system to it. They're cumbersome and clunky to use and I, I none of them ever felt better than the other. Sure, some of them scanned better, or had a better fidelity or quality or better user interface, but they're all still using the same principle. This is an all-in-one standalone 3D scanner. The screen, the computer, the processor, the sensors, it's, it's, it felt like a big, um, it felt like a big Game Boy or an old like uh, Sega Game Gear. God, I just dated myself. Anyway, it, that's it. What you see in the video is the entire scanner and it has a flip up screen for a selfie mode and it has a camera so you can see what you're doing in real time. You can edit the mesh. I wish I had more footage of the rep there, Dustin, literally scanning me in a couple seconds, chest up with full color and it even got my beard hair. And if you know how crazy that is, that's crazy. He said if he had upped the uh, quality or the detail, it would have gotten my hair, but darker colors and stuff usually don't show through on scanning, but he was pretty confident that it would still do it without having to use powder and spray or anything like that. This is game changing for cosplay and a lot of other things, but again, you're here for my channel, so I'm gonna be excited about cosplay. I'm literally about to start making a new Iron Man suit. It's over here. I need to 3D scan my whole body. I wanna 3D scan myself in different poses. I wanna be able to scan people to help make them suits. And now I have an all-in-one self-contained unit that can do this. I want this thing immediately. And I don't, I don't even care if Rebo Point sends me one. I'm buying this. I want this thing right now. This blew my mind. Printing's cool, the technology's advancing. This is wild. Hey, but Revo Point, if, if you wanna send me one, Wait, I have your email. Now, like I said, there was tons of other stuff there that I just didn't have time to look at. I mean, just amazing 3D printing, five, six axis robotic arms that are printing a propeller in, in like ridiculous ways, giant metal printers, beautiful 3D printed metal parts. Like it is, it was just, an unreal experience. Plus there was an after party. Plus Uncle Jesse's flight was delayed and it was really funny and we kept mocking him the whole time. It was just it was just a good time with good people. So if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in the video or anything I talked about, please drop some comments down below. Uh, maybe I glossed over something or maybe I can elaborate in a comment if you have more questions. I read all the comments and I will do my best to respond to as many as possible. Stop shaking. Cool. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out and helps you stay up to date on all the videos I have coming out. Review videos for pretty much every printer I just mentioned, except that $10,000 Prusa, my God. So if you subscribe, make sure you ring the notification bell. This way you stay up to date. But I have to get going and film some other stuff. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.